This is the Red Podcast. This is episode number 14. Today we're going to be talking about quality versus quantity of products. Greg wrote in and he's got a great product and it's doing really, really well. But should he diversify? Should he try to go into more niches? Should he try to reach more people that aren't in his current portfolio? Or should he just stick where he is and make more money that way? That's what we'll be talking about on this episode of the Red Podcast. This is the Red Podcast. Real entrepreneur development. Make more money, work less, and live a life of freedom. No BS advice that really works. Here's your hosts, David Hooper and Laurel Staples. So Laurel, how transparent are we going to get on this podcast? Like super transparent. <laughs> I'm like naked over here. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not. See through. Like a <laughs> See jellyfish. through. I know. Well, we're getting married. We're not hiding that fact, are we? I hope not. Because we're sending out <laughs> invitations. So hopefully someone will know. Well, today has been wedding registry day. Mm. And it's a little weird for two people that are each established in their own right to come together like we did because we've already got everything we need. Plus some. I mean, we had to get rid of a lot. Yeah, absolutely. We need uh, maybe some better podcasting equipment, though. We should put that on the registry, find out (laughs) where we can register, where we can do that. Oh, my gosh. I wish we could do that. Because, David, the things we want, we can't register for. You can't register for podcasting equipment. No one would go for that. Have Have you ever looked at other wedding registries? See, I did that just jonesing for something that, that ho- hoping that we'd find something that we would need. And it's always stupid stuff. It's like Christmas China with like little Santa Clauses on it or something. My favorite was I saw that this one guy had registered online and it was just a, didn't have a woman's name on it. It was just a guy and he had registered for a big screen TV and money. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, Hey, that's different. I'm seeing a lot more people actually actually do that. They'll register just for money. Hey, I mean, that's the best gift anyone can receive. But we're in the South. You know, that's considered tacky. It is. So instead, what we can do is we can get those Christmas plates with the Santa Claus on them. Absolutely not. And never use them. Yeah. We're, the thing is, we're minimalist. We just, it's not that, I mean, yeah, we came in this house with pretty much everything that we needed, but... We we got rid of a ton of stuff. We're always getting rid of stuff. You know, I'm always going through my closet and getting rid of stuff. And we just don't need to bring any more into the house. We should do an episode on minimalism because I see so many entrepreneurs, once they come into money, just start buying things right and left. Mm. And I, I've seen that it, it's bit a lot of guys in the ass. Especially if they're naked. That's what transparency does to you. Though. <laughs> it gets you naked. Well, hey, we got a question. We got a. Or, or, I think this is our first one since starting the podcast, or it's the first one we're going over. Yeah, we did get a question, which is exciting um, that we're going to be answering it today. And do you want me to go ahead and tell people about it? Yeah, sure. Go. Okay, we got a question from Greg, and Greg has got. I'm not going to read it verbatim, but basically he's got a blog that's doing well. He's produced one product that he sells and it's doing pretty good. He says he's having a good run with it and he's trying to decide if he should just focus on selling more of that product, like trying to ramp that up more, or should he create a lot more products? And basically, should he go narrow and deep with this one product or maybe smaller little extensions of this product or go shallow and wide and just start putting out a lot of different products, maybe in different topics or genres. So that's the question on the table today. I read a story that I think relates to this. It was about a woman and she bought, I guess, a bag of charcoal or coal, burned it probably at a cookout or something and found a big chunk of gold, 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 Gold. Man, I feel like I'm, yeah, we don't like edit this gold. podcast. <laughs> coal and gold are throwing yeah. me off. It's a new tongue twister. Mm-hmm. So she, she burned the coal and found gold, a chunk of gold in it. And what she did was go right back to the store where she bought the coal and bought more coal with all the money that she made from the gold, the piece of gold. 
So mm. she's got tons and tons and tons of coal and burned through it, didn't find a thing. And I, I think that can sometimes happen. We've got one product that we strike gold with and we think, hey, let's just do more of this. And that would make sense, right? You want to reinvest your profits most of the time and, and diversify them if you can. But sometimes it, it just doesn't work out. I read something else just recently about a guy who was extremely diversified, at least when it came to the Kindle platform. He's doing this all on Kindle. He had 500 titles. He was making about five grand a month, wow. which is $10 per title per month. Not so very not much. bad, right? Yeah, not very it's much not per much. product, I mean, it, but overall doing pretty well. It's a good. churn and burn thing. He was just figuring, hey, if I've got another 500, I can probably make 10,000 a month. And I think that was his game. Not necessarily marketing on the back end, but you've got to have good salesmanship or marketing or something on the front end. Now that guy, it's not going to hurt him if a couple of those go away or if a trend happens or if technology changes and something goes away. It it would hurt Greg. So there's some pros and cons of doing this. And, and let's go a little bit deeper into those. Yeah, let's look at some of the pros of going. Do you want to look at pros of going wide yeah, and shallow? Yeah. Let's look at that because it sounds okay. like right now Greg is going, you know, kind of narrow and Greg's somewhat a, deep. He's like a laser beam. He's as focused as, as he can get. And our, our Kindle guy, that's going to be the example that we use for going wide. Yeah, so, so that's the opposite. So let's look at the pros of going wide, like okay. the Kindle guy. We'll, we'll compare and contrast here. The, the Kindle guy, as I mentioned, he's got diversification. So he's got 500 products. He's making about 10 bucks each. And if he loses a couple of them, it's not going to be such a big deal. Greg, on the other hand, if he loses that one product, as I mentioned, technology or trends, we see this on Shark Tank sometimes, Laurel. Have you ever seen it where there'll be something that it was really hot for a moment, like a Something we'll get to get on Pinterest, maybe. Like, I remember there were some boots or something one time on Shark Tank. And socks. Socks. That's what it was. It was socks. Socks. And they asked, they said, oh, how did these things take off? We sold a, a bajillion dollars of them. Well, it got picked up on Pinterest, but the sales were kind of dropping. So well, it was you'll, that, you'll see that. It was that other episode with the brownie pan. Do you remember that? This couple had created the brownie pan with... Where all it, edges. All edges. Yeah. All the brownies had an edge to them. And they... They did really, really well with it because it went on Oprah Magazine or Oprah TV or whatever. And they sold, again, a bazillion, as you put it, of them. And then they were trying to come out with the next thing because that product was kind of dying off because, as the shark said, well, everybody that wanted that brownie pan bought it. And now you're kind of dying out. And they had tried to come out with this muffin pan. It just wasn't a big hit. Yeah. Or it's just a trend. Maybe people aren't eating brownies anymore. So that would definitely be the pro of going wide is you don't run into that brownie pan fiasco. No, you're, you're fiasco. diverse. Yeah, you've got brownies and then you've got your muffins already going and you're only making 10 bucks each from a lot of different products. So it, it's kind of like a, a portfolio in the stock portfolio game. You have a wide, wide range of stocks that you invest in and overall the thing's going to go up probably. And that's that's kind of the Kindle business I was mentioning. Whereas the other one, with a single product, it's like a single stock. It fluctuates a lot. It's like being a, a little bitty ship with huge waves coming through. You're not as, not as able to handle those. But if you can ride a big wave, man, you can go, go, go. And, and that's what is probably happening to Greg right now. He's, he's doing all right. What are some other pros? Diversify pro, is a well, good one. Well, when you're just throwing stuff out there, you don't have to spend a lot on one product. Like you, money wise, or? well, money wise, promotion wise, this guy, in fact, the Kindle guy was saying something about, and I couldn't believe this. I mean, he must be putting out just total crap and still doing well <laughs> with it, which I think, in one way, is really inspiring. He said he was spending fifty to two hundred dollars on the longer books that he would put out, like on ghost writing them. Or? I, yeah, he wasn't writing them. He okay. could have done five hundred of them, but probably for fifty to. $200. I mean, I've hired a lot of people on Elance to do various forms of writing for me. You're not going to get much done for 50 to 200. Maybe maybe a, a good writer, like maybe a blog post mm. somewhere. You're probably like not going to get a native speaker for that. Well, level. yeah. And maybe, maybe he just doesn't care. I mean, he's really, really going wide. <laughs> <laughs> he's got that wide net and he's, he's, this is what happens. He's, uh, 
you know, he's looking for tuna, but he's going to pick him up some dolphins. That's what mm-hmm. happens when you've got that wide, wide net. Well, and, as opposed to writing something like a book, which is going to cost way more than 200 to $500 to, presu- to produce, whether you get a guest writer, whether you write it yourself, it's well, just a lot more Well, let's talk about investment. the books, since, since that's a great comparison to somebody who's doing something on Kindle. My last book, it took me about two years to write. It was going way deep. The thing was about 100,000 words at first. It ended up being 70, and that's after several editors. And this thing is still going on. I checked last week was the last time I looked. It was the number two music business book Woo-hoo. online. So that's give good, us, give right? Give us the name, David. Let's do okay. a shameless plug. Okay, here. well, yeah. It's, if, if you're interested, go to Amazon. You can look it up. It's called Six Figure Musician, and it looks like a ticket. But... That's what happens. That book has been out a little over a year now, and it's still going strong. I'm still getting calls about it, still getting sales on it. And, and that's what will happen if you can go really, really deep, know the audience, spend a lot of time. It's a risk, though. You're working on a new book right now, Laurel, and you spent how many months? You're about six months in on it, eight months in? More like eight. Yeah, and it's going to be another probably six months before it comes out? <laughs> yeah, at least. I mean, it's a long process, and it's scary to to kind of bet the farm if you will to put all your eggs in one basket and say yeah i'm going for it but if the thing takes off that's you know i, I think about you know who i really love for an example of this is uh, to kill a mockingbird you ever read that book oh yeah she wrote one book that's it she's like 90 years old still living off the book it's been made into a film every freshman high school class in the united states has to get it it's a bestseller all around the world it's a fantastic book she just did did it once I remember my mother laughing at me because when I had to go get it at the bookstore, when I had to read it, I was like, Mom, I need the book How to Kill a Mockingbird. She's like, Laurel, it's not How to Kill a Mockingbird. It's To Kill a Mockingbird. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't the nonfiction. <laughs> no, it wasn't the nonfiction manual guide of how to get a BB gun and kill the mockingbird. That wasn't it. So she laughed well, at me there. So, I, I mean, but I, I, I think that's it, though. If you've got one product that you're doing really, really well with, you can – really really live off of it for to use a, another music example since the book is on the music business if you heard those bands they have like one big hit and mm-hmm. they can tour all around if the hit is big enough for years and years and years because people love that one song so much so you can do that as opposed to like uh, an uh, you know it's the example of like a home run versus a bunch of singles you can still bat the points in but it's going to take you more times at bat, and you're not going to have that strong of a, a swing and, and a hit. But well, you're still going to get the same job done. It's just a different way of approaching it. Well, let me ask you this, because we're talking about the pros of going wide, and you're talking about the pros of going deep. So what are, what are some more of the pros of going wide, like your Kindle guy with the 500 books? Well, I think it's quick. I, I think the Kindle guy with the, the 500 books, here's one pro that I don't think a lot of people think about is this guy doesn't have his name on everything Hmm. in that he doesn't have to deal with feedback. He can just throw a bunch of stuff out there. He can make a lot of money, doesn't have the customer service, just throws it out there and he doesn't have to really answer any, anything to anybody. So he's in all different genres and topics. Well, well, he'd have to be because you can't have 500 books on a, on a single genre. Now I don't know that for sure, but I'd be willing to bet everything on that. You could, if you had a fiction book, but he has nonfiction. Well, yeah, maybe if it's like a romance novel, but even the most just uh, incredible writers, Stephen King, Daniel Steele, John Grisham. I mean, those guys are doing mysteries. They're doing romance. They're doing horror. They're not doing 500 books. That's more going deep. And, And I think actually bringing those guys up, that's, probably a good middle ground for people to think about if you're doing something it is good to diversify don't think that you've got a single product that's working well that you're going to be able to continue to have it work well for a long time because of trends because of technology if your single product for example was an auto dialer for telemarketing you can't use those things anymore i was like what is that yeah well you can't use it if it was a a ibm selectric typewriter we use word processors now (laughs) if it's a fax machine we just scan things and send them via email now. So if, if you're going for one piece of technology or product or something, technology and trends, those things change. But at the same time, let's say instead of 
well, let's look at IBM, perfect example. They don't just have typewriters. They've got computers. They've got mainframes. They've got personal computers. They've got data storage devices. They've got all sorts of things. So that, that's the diversification. You could do that within your business. You're a mystery writer. Do more than one mystery. Because somebody who's buying whatever Greg's product is, they're likely going to want more of that. Think about... 